Hey, this is Sharon Trivata, and welcome back to the Business School Podcast. And in this episode, I'm going to talk to you about automation. Now, automation is a really powerful thing because I have this phrase stuck in my head, which is amateurs automate for efficiency, professionals automate for accuracy. Amateurs automate for efficiency, but professionals automate for accuracy. And the way I like to think about this is I ask this question, wouldn't it be amazing when blank? That's how I've built all my automations. Wouldn't it be amazing when I click a button and these 14 things happen? Wouldn't it be amazing when I don't have to think about it and these nine things happen? Wouldn't it be amazing when a sale happens and these four things happen along with it? Wouldn't it be amazing when blank? And that's when I came up with this idea of trying to understand the uncommon truths about automating anything. If you just listen to this episode in a very short amount of time, you'll figure out the foundations for how you think about automating anything. And so I'm going to break down for you the three uncommon truths about automating anything. And it all starts right now. One thing is for certain, just because it's tried and true doesn't mean it's working right now. So the big question is this, where can you learn what is working right now? The strategies, the tactics, the psychology, and the exact how to, how to grow your business how to blow up your personal brand and supercharge your personal growth. That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answer. My name is Sharon Srivatsa, and welcome to Business School. There is this massive craze about automation, automate this, automate that. I just want everything to work automatically. I want to funnel this. I want to bot that. Everybody wants automation and I am, I, I am your main man for automation. I love automation. I spend time automating my automations. I love automation, but at some point we have to realize the cardinal rule of automation. Let me explain what it is. People will disagree with me on this, but let me tell you what it, what it is. Amateurs automate for efficiency. Professionals automate for accuracy. Say it again. Amateurs automate for efficiency and professionals automate for accuracy. So I want to give you the the absolute fundamental way before you should or I should automate anything, right? Now, again, I'm generalizing, but most of the projects that we have to undertake don't require that much, but it requires a level, a clarity of thinking in how we implement stuff. And I see this with my mastermind groups all the time. And that's why I wanted to bring this up. The best way to automate something is to first do it manually. <laughs> it again. The best way to automate something is to first do it manually. Most of the times you don't even need to automate anything. Most of the times, if you are inviting, you know, uh, your email list to a Zoom webinar, you don't need to go set up the Zoom registration page. You don't need, you just literally, you send them a link saying, Hey, see you on Thursday at 3 PM. Here's a link, no registration required. People know how to copy paste and put links in their calendars. You don't need to go set up the automation. You just no reason to do that. Uh, yes, it's an auto sign up and they get reminders and all. You don't need to do that. Get When you're tired and it's Tuesday night and you need to get it out, just get the email out. If you're thinking about doing a uh, DM closing strategy where someone sends, you know, you, you get leads via Messenger or Rec Messenger and you want to have a cool little funnel happen, just have your virtual assistant or have someone on your team just manage that chat bot. Manage that channel. As the leads come in, see what they're inquiring, see what they're asking for. Handle it for a week manually. You probably don't need to turn on lead gen big time. Handle it for a week manually. Get the process going. See what people are asking. Then you'll know what to build. Then you'll know what to build. And the reason I say this is, um, I was sharing today with uh, my mastermind group, and I said, before you build a piece of automation, ask yourself this question. The question is, wouldn't it be amazing if blank? Wouldn't it be amazing if there was a Facebook ad that linked to a landing page where it could capture an email? It would then put them into an application funnel where people would apply to work with me. And when they were done working with me based on uh, the revenue requirements of their business that they stated in the application, it would either send them to a calendar link to schedule a call, or it would just send them to a product for something to buy uh, if they were not qualified. That's a really good thing. Like I just made that up, right? But literally I've told you, now I need a Facebook ad to link to a landing page to link to a 
capture, that capture has to go to a CRM somewhere that needs to link to a form. The form has to actually like be written and be hosted somewhere. The form needs to have the ability to do logic. That logic is going to be based on certain revenue questions. Those revenue questions need to be like pre-designed and pre-written. And based on each of those revenue questions, either is going to go to a calendar link, which we need that, or it needs to go to a product, which I hope you have one. Once we, now if I know that, I can say, cool, let me draw that out. And then I'll say, well, what are the raw materials? Let's go find the pieces of all of this first. I'm not going to go build something before I have all these pieces. It's no different than saying, I want to make pecan pie. And then you're like, okay, well, what does a pecan pie include? I eat the crust. I need pecan, pecan I don't know. I never made pecan pie, but I love pecan pie. I love pecan pie, but I've never made pecan pie. I don't know what else goes into pecan pie. But my point is that you would figure out all the ingredients. You would figure out everything that was necessary, and then you would figure out how to put it all together. And because in this automation world, we think we should put it all together first. So number one, if you can't do it manually, you shouldn't automate it. Like there's no reason to automate something you can't do manually because doing it manually provides for a certain level of accuracy or at least the accuracy of thinking around it because you're probably not going to do stupid things manually. So forcing yourself to do it manually, you will create the right system, which you can then automate, right? And the second thing is asking the question, wouldn't it be amazing when I could do blank and then just describe the blank. And then when you'd like to start describing the blank, you get to draw out the pieces, you get to talk about the pie that you want, and then you can talk about the ingredients of the pie. And then when you actually talk to a funnel builder or automation engineer or someone on your team, you could say, hey, this is what I'm thinking. It looks like I need a few of these assets. What are we missing? Can we do something like this? And here is the best part. Most of the time what they will say is, yes, we can. And you don't say, yes, here's what you say. How can we build it with the assets that we already have? Here's lesson number three. How can we build it with the assets that we already have? And you know what your team will say? Well, Sharon, we can build it, but it's not going to have this extra page and this extra bell and whistle. Great. Let's go build it without those two. And then when we get those two, we can add them in. There's this, there's this amazing uh, feeling of getting something done, but most people wait till they have all the ingredients to make the perfect pecan pie. Remember, this is not a pecan pie. This is a test. So I want to build it with the ingredients that I already have, and then I'll add the a la mode and the whipped cream on the top and all of that good stuff. So three big lessons. Lesson number one, if you can't do it manually, I'm not sure you can do it very well in an automated way as a general rule. So do it manually first and don't let the manual component deter you from doing something, right? It's okay to do it first. Number two, ask the question, wouldn't it be amazing if I could, when something happened, blank, wouldn't it be amazing when blank, and then describe what you want to have happen. The last question to ask is, even if we don't have all the ingredients, could we build it with the ingredients that we already have? And if you can build it with the ingredients that you already have, that makes for the first phase one of it, and then you can add more things to it later. Um, remember, amateurs automate for efficiency, professionals automate for accuracy. And I know you are a pro, so automate for accuracy. Hey, Sharon, I have a cool gift for you. Since you like this podcast, I actually have an ultra super secret private podcast that I make just for my partner companies and the CEOs and influencers that I advise. It's called 10K Wisdom because I try to wrap $10,000 worth of value in every single episode in just under 10 minutes. That's why it's called 10K Wisdom. It's raw, it's real, it's got no intro or outro or anything like that. It's just straight to the point and to the insights. Since you like this podcast, I think you will like that. So for the first time, I'm making it available to you. Just go to 10kwisdom.com, the number 10kwisdom.com, and my team will activate it for you as my gift. Go to 10kwisdom.com, I'll see you there.